everybody, welcome to The Mountain Gamer. Today we're taking a look at Nova Luna, which is an abstract tile-laying game, and it's currently in the running to uh, maybe win the 2020 Spiel the Jahres? Jahres? Yeah, German, I don't know. So yeah, it's in the running to win, and uh, does that mean it's a good game? Well, let's jump into it right now. I'm gonna show you how it plays, and then we'll come back and see what I think about it. Okay, so here I've got a game set up for two players, uh, in this case blue and orange, but you can play up to four by using these other discs here, white and black. Now before we get into this whole fancy donut situation, let's actually talk about these tiles, what they mean, and how you play them, and then we'll come back to this whole mechanism here. Okay, so let's look at some tiles here. Let's look at these two, okay? So this is a red tile, this is a yellow tile. The top here is the uh, time cost, and we'll get to that later. Now these little, uh, you know, discs here represent goals, okay? This one has two goals, this one has three. And as far as these, these little uh, marbles here, basically this is like um, a shopping list that you have to complete before you can actually complete that goal, okay? So for instance, what this means here is, if I can connect a turquoise and a red to this tile, then I will have completed this goal. So essentially throughout gameplay, I might end up having a turquoise tile and I will kind of plug it onto that one and then I'll try and get a red tile and then I'll plug it onto that one. So right now, because I have a red tile plugged in here and a turquoise tile plugged in here, I can now complete this goal. Now you might be wondering, why does the disc not cover the whole circle here? I don't know. And it's one of the things that annoys me the most about this game. I feel like it's a production error. I mean, really, if you look at the, the rule book, um, you can clearly see that these discs were supposed to cover the whole thing. So whatever, doesn't really impact gameplay, but it is a minor annoyance. Okay, so first thing you gotta know, and we were kind of confused about this, is the orientation of these little balls here has nothing to do with anything, really, okay? Like you don't have to put a turquoise up and then a red down or anything like that. This is, like I said, just a shopping list. It could have been written turquoise and red, like in letters, you know what I mean? So don't mind the orientation of these things, it does not matter. So as I said, having a red and a turquoise plugged into that one, that would complete this goal. And then as you keep playing, you'll wanna fill in more of these goals, okay? And you can go about this any way, and in, in any order, in the sense that you don't have to fill in a whole tile to then move on to the other one. Like if I was able to complete this by doing, I don't know, this and then that, plugging in a yellow and a blue, well then this goal is completed. That's it. And you can just go, like I said, in any order. So that takes care of, let's say, these multicolor goals. But what if you have a goal with three of the same color? Well, that's where it kind of gets cool because um, when you are plugging in tiles of one single color, you can actually make a chain. For example, if I have this, let's say I plug this up here, well, I have an unbroken sequence of red that plugs into this tile here, and that means this is now complete. So that's pretty cool. When you have tiles of a single color, you can actually make a chain, and as long as they finish or start on a tile that has you know that particular goal, well, then you can score it. Um, so this is a legal move. This is also legal because it's like a, a snaky unbroken chain that plugs into here. You could also do something like um, red touches that, red goes like here, and it could be like this, basically. So I have two that plugs into the yellow and one that also plugs into yellow. So essentially, I've got three red plugging into this tile. So boom, this goal is completed. There you go. And now what's cool about this is as you're placing these tiles, and by the way, you don't have to make a nice symmetrical shape here, okay? It could be, could be something crazy like this. So as I was saying, what's cool is as you're putting these new tiles on here, um, you will sometimes uh, realize that you're completing goals, like maybe you didn't even know it, okay? Like for example, uh, this one here, it says have a turquoise tile plugged into here. Well, I do. So right there, that goal is done. You also have some pretty cool situations where, let's say this is where I'm at right now, and I draft a tile and it's this one here. Just by putting it here, I actually complete two goals. So you have a blue plugged in here, so completing that one. And I have a turquoise plugged into here, completing this one. So with this one tile, I completed two goals at once. 
Here's another situation that's pretty cool. Uh, let's say this goal is asking for two reds. So by putting this here, I of course complete this goal. But then later, if I go and play this, and well, actually by playing this, I've got two reds plugged into that one. So that's done. And then if I come in and plug this thing in, I actually have four touching this tile. So that would complete this goal right here. And also, this tile, because I have three reds, one is plugging into here and two are plugging into here, completes this goal. So the tiles that you're using can be used to complete multiple goals. So you're not only using, you know, these two for one goal, you can actually reuse them for another goal and another goal and another goal. So this is pretty cool. It, it gets pretty, pretty puzzly and pretty uh, chain reaction-y over time. So that's just one example of how these things can kind of chain out of control in a cool way. And it's at this point that I should probably mention that you win the game by getting rid of all of your tokens. You have 20 tokens, and the first person who gets rid of them by completing 20 goals wins the game. So it is kind of a race. So let's go check out the donut to see how this whole thing interacts with your own little puzzle. Okay, so let's say we're actually starting the game and blue will go first, okay? So blue can now choose any of the three tiles that are next in line to this big moon here. So essentially he can take this, this, or that. Now, let's say I'm gonna take this one here. I'm gonna look at the time marker here. This says five, which means that I have to move my disc up here five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And then we put the moon on the space where I took the tile from. So this is now my tile. Okay, sweet. Now to determine who the next player is, you always look at who is lagging behind. In this case, of course, it's orange. And uh, she can take one, two, or three, right? Any of those. And let's say she wants this one here. So she'll take it, move the moon, put it in her display, and now she has to move three. So one, two, three. But now you see, because she's lagging behind, she can take another turn. So one of the interesting decisions here when you're playing is, am I gonna go for these higher uh, time valued tiles because essentially the higher ones are easier to complete because they have more options and you know they have a lot of variations so they're easier to do or will you go with these lower ones that are tougher to do like for example here this one is two but this is very hard like getting four of the same is pretty hard to do but on the flip side because you're only moving up by two you can probably take another turn right now so this is the whole balancing act that you'll be doing throughout the game. So for now, let's say my orange player did take that and uh, she can now play again. So now she's looking possibly to get some blue, maybe some yellow, uh, turquoise or yellow. Yeah, that's another thing that bugs me here. The, the color scheme between turquoise and blue seems pretty clear on these big tiles, but on these little balls here, sometimes it kind of gets iffy. Anyway, so she'll want yellow. So let's say she'll go, I want that. Okay, she'll take it, put that there. Now, when you pick up a new tile, you can't just put it anywhere. You can't, you know, it always has to be connected to your display. And in this case, it has to go somewhere here, right? And you can put it anywhere you want, but you do have to think about these things. But let's say, boom, she wants it there. Fine. So now, because she picked that one, she'll have to move by five. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, so now blue is lagging behind. Blue's gonna go. Blue would like to get, you know, two red, two yellow, two turquoise. And we can pick from these three here. So I'm gonna say, maybe I'm gonna go get me some yellow. Fine, so yellow, put that there. And then one, two, three. Now when you're on top of another disc, you get to go next. So I'm gonna plug this over here. And then what am I gonna take? So for now, I don't know, maybe I'll take that one. Maybe I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try and make a big chain of a turquoise eventually. So I pick that one, I go there. It's two, so I move by two, one, two. So now lagging behind is orange. So orange says, well, she'd like two turquoise to maybe plug them in here to, to complete that goal. Or she's got a red, if she could get another red, it would do that one here. So yeah, maybe go get another red. So she's like, okay, do I take six, five or seven? Oh, this one is backwards, sorry about that. So maybe she looks at my thing and she's like, okay, he's trying to get some red, so I don't wanna leave any for him. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take this to jump over all of this stuff, putting this down here, moving seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're gonna put this here. 
So I have a chain of two plugging into that one, completing this goal. And now I'm stuck behind and I'm gonna have to take either one, two, or three. So what would I want in this particular situation? Well, getting a blue tile doesn't really help me, but if I take that one, it has a two turquoise on it and I already have two turquoise. So maybe I do that. Maybe I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do that. And I'll move by five. So one, two, three, four, five. And look at that, I'm on, I'm on top. So I actually get to go next. And now I take this thing and I go, okay, fine. I'll put it here. So now I have two turquoise plugging into here. So I actually complete this goal. Oops, right there. Now it is possible for you to complete more than one goal on your turn. And this happens a lot, um, mostly in the close to the end game. You'll plug in one tile and it's like, boom, 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 boom. Three, four goals all at once. And so you gotta watch out for that. So this is it. This is how the game is gonna go. Now, eventually, uh, you know, these things are gonna run out. Now, when there are two or one tiles, the rules say that you can grab new tiles and fill in the entire track. And there are a lot in here. And if you don't wanna do that, well, then you can wait until everything gets completely empty. And then you just have to refill the whole thing. So you'll keep playing like this until one player gets rid of all their tokens. And the first one to do that is the winner of Nova Luna. Component wise, uh, the game comes with this big wheel, this fancy little cardboard token here, completely unnecessary, but pretty. Uh, it also comes with 21 discs. Again, very small, very difficult to handle and too small for the tiles. Uh, four colors, and you've got a total of 68 tiles who pretty much all look the same. So there you go, pretty good components, pretty sturdy stuff. It's all very good, except for those dang tokens. And also, for your information, there is a solo mode for this thing. I have not tried it, but it looks all right to me. So there you go. All right, there you go. Now, full disclaimer, I only tried this thing as a two-player game, and I'll get to that later on, okay? But for me, how does it feel to play this game? Well. I would say the game starts off pretty chill, okay? It's like it's a sipping a cup of tea, playing a game type of thing in the first few rounds. Because let's say your your display or your area or whatever has like through two, three tiles, you know? And then when it when it comes to your turn and you have to pick one of those three, like on, on the donut, it's not a huge decision, right? It's like, well, if I take the first one, I can plug it here, here, or here. If I take the second one, I can put it here, here, here. It's not a big deal. It's still interesting, but it's like, it's kind of breezy, right? But as the game progressive, pro progresses and your thing just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, every decision that you make is like huge. Like it's not brain burning or anything like that, but if you have like 10 tiles in front of, in front of you, uh, any which one of these three that you take will generate like multiple scenarios. If I put this one here, it, w it will activate, but it'll also make a chain to that one. But if I put it over there, then maybe I won't score it now, but it'll be much more beneficial for me. But and blah, blah, it's like, blah. you know, it gets pretty intense towards those last rounds. So I appreciate that. I like how this whole thing ramps up, okay, towards the end. It's very much, and those last few rounds, it, it feels like a race. You're looking at, you know, your opponent's um, area and you're like, Ugh, she's got like three little discs left and I have four. Could I pick just one tile and chain reaction this whole thing to actually score everything and end the game? So these last rounds are pretty tense and I like that. Now, when it's not your turn, when it's your opponent's turn, it's still, um, it's not boring or anything because not only are you looking at your own thing, but you're considering, okay, what is she doing? Like if she takes that first one, gonna push me over there but if she plays two times I'm gonna go over there so by looking at the other player take their turn you can kind of you know compute in your own head like okay if she does that this is the one I'm gonna take but if she does that I'm gonna have to go for that one so you're always thinking you're always engaged and I appreciate that which brings me to three and four players I don't think I'll ever play with three or four players because honestly all of everything I just described will not happen you can't plan, you just can't. I mean, he's gonna play, she's gonna play, she's gonna play, then it's me. I mean, that's like one to three tiles further down, one to three tiles further down, and again, this 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 thing could go around the donut. So there's no way you can plan out or even think to plan ahead, you know, you just can't. So what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna do my thing, and then while he plays, I'm probably gonna just chit-chat or, you know, watch the birds. Ah, look at the grouse. 
text or whatever. So I think the dynamic with three or four is gonna be meh. That's just meh. And what's gonna happen is the game length is gonna just, you know, double for sure. As a two player game, I like that this is like 15 to 25 minutes. Really, it's pretty quick, it's pretty fast. This, this is the kind of game where it's like, hey honey, I've put the tuna casserole in the oven and let's just knock this thing out, you know, and have some fun. This is that kind of game. If I'm gonna play a game where the, the, the goal is to just be efficient, I don't want it to last more than half an hour. That's what she said. So there you go. Now, about the whole Spiel the Yars thing, is this game, you know, deserving of the nomination? Well, first of all, you should know, and it, they talk about this in, in, in the actual game, um, this game is based on a game from 2000 something called uh, Habitats, okay? A game designed by Corne van Morsel, a man from the Netherlands. Now, I went back and I checked out how to play this game and everything, and it's very similar. In a strange way, um, it feels like Nova Luna came first as a very simple, streamlined type of thing, and then it feels, when you watch Habitats, it's like, oh, there's just more stuff. You know, there's just more ways to score and it's, yeah, so anyway. So what happened is, um, Uwe Rosenberg kind of took Habitats and, as I said, like, removed some stuff, changed the whole donut thing. Like, instead of a donut, it used to be like a leapfrog situation where you would take a little, uh, little, a little guy and you jump over a tile and that's the tile you would put in your display. And then different ways to score and all that. So anyway, so Uwe Rosenberg took Habitats, took some stuff away, trimmed it down, made it, you know, nice and tight. And then, you know, now it's called Nova Luna. And it says it's designed by Ua Rosenberg and Corne Van Morsel, because he's like, I'm gonna mention Corne Van Morsel because essentially I just kind of tweaked his game to make something new. Now that within itself is fine, okay, fine. Where I have a problem with that is the nomination. It's, it, I just find the nomination strange, just based on the fact that it's not a brand new design. It's just a tweaked version of something that came out not so long ago and that was, and the other game was good. Anyway, I'm rambling here, clearly. Um, bottom line, nomination or not, I would say this is a decent two-player abstract tile laying game, okay? At three and four, look, if you want a game in which you can just like zone out while the other you know, people are playing and then jump right back in when it's your turn, then fine, it's a decent game. So there you have it, Nova Luna. Let me know if you try it out. And if you or anyone you know can tell me why those discs are so dang small, please, please let me know in the comments because that is like my number one gripe about the game. Yeah, I know, petty. So that's it, thanks for watching and I will see you guys on the next one. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button down below. Now, I know it seems like a very small thing to do, but it actually does help the channel when you do that. And if ever you should find yourself in a super generous mood, well, I do accept donations via PayPal. And anything you give, big or small, will help keep me going. Eat it, Phyllis. Dip it in the water so it'll slide down your gullet more easily. That's what she said. Oh, no, 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 not that. Just